that prides on um, uh, educating working adults. And so that's been the history of our department. And so we make sure that students um, are, you know, well-trained, uh, well-connected to their community uh, professionally uh, so that, you know, we can help provide them the goals, um, you know, help them to achieve the goals that, that they need in order to advance professionally. Um, hence our, our name, uh, the School of Professional Advancement. And so um, for over 130 years, we've dedicated to this mission. And so this is exactly why we um, would like for students uh, just like yourself to be a part of that uh, mission. So why SOPA? Um, again, uh, we provide that rich, um, in-depth uh, learning for all of our students. Uh, we have a, a host of programs that uh, would fit almost any one of any type uh, of student, whether it's a student straight out of college or a, an, an older student who wants to get back and learn some skills. Uh, we're completely affordable, we're flexible, and in order to help you get from the admissions process all the way to graduation, we have a host of student supports that are um, available uh, to help you. So the, uh, so SOPA has um, prided itself on uh, the development of online learning um, on Tulane's campus. Uh, we have the first uh, of its kind of many different online programs uh, that are available uh, to fit the needs of students and so we understand that you guys do work. You are working adults, you have families, you have uh, many different responsibilities. And so we design our uh, online programs and our courses in a way that uh, makes it uh, easy for you to have the most interactive experience possible. Uh, you are connected with a diverse group of other students as well as your faculty members. Um, and you know, we make sure that the, when the classes are designed, that they are um, accessible for all students. Uh, you have uh, monthly meetings online to make that, to have that in-person on-campus feel um, with your professors as well as your classmates and uh, your peers. And so that's what we um, pride our online education on is making sure that we have that whole holistic uh, view of learning so that you understand what it means to be not only an online student, but how it also feels to be um, on campus virtually as well. So for us, we have um, a total of uh, eight master's programs, uh, 11 graduate certificates, uh, four post-baccalaureate certificates or PBCs, and we have uh, over 300 courses that are um, taught online. And so we have um, many of our students spend countless hours and time doing online coursework um, because it, again, it offers that flexibility. Uh, and the quality of these courses and programs um, reflects um, the online instruction in terms of how the courses are designed. We make sure that everything is top notch and uh, again, accessible and uh, meets the needs of our students. And so, this is exactly why many students choose our online programs uh, over others because of the richness and uh, the depth of uh, how we have our courses designed. All right, so I'll turn it over to Mark to give a little bit more information about the Emergency and Security Studies programs. Thanks, Amanda. Uh, Y'all are all here today for but one reason is because you have an interest in our program, uh, because you have an interest in, in what Homeland Security is, what emergency management is, and what security management is. Uh, Homeland Security is this national effort to ensure um, that everyone is safe and secure uh, against terrorism and other hazards. And we do this through what's called an all hazards approach. Uh, and, and, and that's a focus on how we do things uh, during both a natural disaster and a man-made or a technological event. Um, and of course, Homeland Security uh, 
kind of encompasses many things. It encompasses emergency management, uh, critical infrastructure pr protection, uh, cybersecurity and the threats dealing with, with cybersecurity, uh, intelligence, uh, counterterrorism, uh, uh, defense of the homeland, and of course, uh, border security. Next slide, please. But what do emergency managers do? <clears throat> um, so we look in terms of what, what hazards are presented uh, and the disasters that these hazards often cause. Uh, that's the basis of the profession of emergency management. We have to develop and appreciate and foster an understanding of the dynamics behind each of those hazards. And that in turn allows us to reduce our exposure, uh, vulnerability, and ultimately risk to our citizens and our communities. Um, in my career as an emergency manager, I often got asked, what, what do you do? Emergency managers manage expectations. It's as simple as that. You manage expectations from the public, uh, from government officials, uh, and the business community on a continuous basis. Uh, can you uh, proceed to the next slide? So where do emergency and security professionals work? Uh, well, they work across all levels of government in the public sector um, and in the private sector as well, and including uh, various industries and of course in the healthcare industry. Next slide, please. So just a little bit about our programs. Um, the VA and Homeland Security Studies is a 120 hour um, a program. And you'll spend um, a great deal of time uh, concentrating on Homeland Security courses, of course, in that major, uh, 30 credits in Homeland Security uh, courses. And there are some online options for our bachelor's program. And some of these courses include uh, intelligence analysis, uh, counterterrorism, uh, critical infrastructure protection, of course, basic emergency management, and in cybersecurity. Uh, we have we offer two certificates: uh, the post baccalaureate certificate in Homeland Security Studies. Uh, this is available to you if you've already earned your, your bachelor's degree, uh, and it gives you an opportunity to add to your existing skill set that you already have, or uh, new skill sets in a new discipline. Uh, in this certificate program, you'll take uh, eight, a total of eight undergraduate Homeland Security courses. Uh, we also offer graduate certificates in the security management field, emergency management field, as well as sports uh, security. In these certificate programs, we have uh, four courses each, and you can apply those courses uh, toward a Master of Professional Studies if you can choose to continue your education. Our uh, MPS and Homeland Security Studies is based on a curriculum of 10 courses. Uh, that's four core uh, 6,000 level courses and six 7,000 level courses, uh, including uh, courses in emergency management, of course, intelligence analysis, uh, approaches to counterterrorism, and then some of our broader, uh, more specific courses and uh, 7,000 level of human intelligence and counterintelligence border security, narco-terrorism, law and national society. To, uh, to earn your MPS, you have to maintain a cumulative GPA of, uh, of 3.00. Um, of course, some career options, if you choose uh, the MPS and Homeland Security Studies uh, is, is as an emergency management specialist, uh, special agent for a federal uh, agency, possibly a safety manager, uh, and of course, working in uh, disaster response and recovery operations. Our MPS and security management is 11 graduate courses. So you'll take nine courses, uh, one elective, and then a capstone at the end of your uh, course of study. Uh, some of our courses in the MPS program include physical and infrastructure protection systems, uh, risk management and threat, ass threat assessments, uh, corporate security and cyber threats and home, home and homeland security. Again, you have to maintain a 3.0 grade point average. Next slide, please. Our MPS and emergency management, uh, again, is 11 courses. Same thing as our security management, but nine courses, one elective and a capstone at the end. Uh, some of our graduate level courses in the program include uh, health and medical issues and emergency management. 
uh, business continuity, emergency planning, and disaster communications. Once again, uh, you have to maintain that 3.0. Amanda spoke about it uh, earlier in, in, in our webinar about uh, the experience of our faculty. And I think that is a, a major facet, especially in our program, uh, of, of the, the talent and the years of experience and practical experience that our faculty brings to uh, the program. Uh, you know, we have four uh, uh, people here shown on this slide that, that come from a, a, a wide variety and uh, across sectors in emergency management. You have, of course, the public sector uh, represented um, a former law enforcement and, and intelligence uh, personnel um, working in emergency management in the medical field and, of course, uh, uh, the private industry and consulting um, in emergency management as well. When uh, you graduate from our program, and, and, and quite possibly even some of you, you uh, prospective students now, uh, working or already working in the field across a wide range of, of organizations like uh, the military, uh, federal law enforcement, or emergency management intelligence agencies. Uh, we have students and graduates working in state agencies uh, from all across the country. Uh, large agencies from major cities to rural uh, areas of our country, and of course in the private industry and corporations. Especially in the online environment, uh, students have the tremendous opportunity to learn from their fellow classmates uh, who come from a wide varied background in homeland security and emergency management. All right, so um, as a student um, at SOFA, uh, you will have a uh, host of student support services that will be available to you. Uh, we have academic advisors um, who work alongside with the program directors, um, such as uh, Dr. Mark Wallace, uh, Michael Wallace and uh, Ms. Mark Richards. We work hand in hand together to make sure that you have um, the best experience possible um, as a student in our programs. Uh, we have, like uh, Mark said, just expert faculty um, in the field and they bring those real world experiences into the classroom to uh, enhance your learning. Uh, we have career advisors as well uh, that also work hand in hand with our program directors to make sure that you have uh, all the um, opportunities necessary in terms of networking and um, connecting with uh, folks in the community so that you can get, make yourself as much mar as marketable as possible so that when you're looking for employment, um, you have those skills already identified. Um, as well as a network of program, of your program peers and Tulane alum alumni. Um, I noticed that, you know, Luke had asked the question about that, um, if, you know, networking is possible in online programs, and absolutely, uh, you will be able to network with your peers, your faculty, um, with alumni, you'll be connected with those individuals, and again, you'll get connected to um, many different internship or employment opportunities as well through that. So applying is very simple. Um, the application is online um, and for undergraduates there is a, uh, a $40 application fee and $50 for the graduate application fee. However, because you joined with us today that fee will be waived on both ends. Uh, you will have to make sure that you have a clear image of a government ID uploaded uh, as well as any transcripts. Um, I noticed that we had another question about transferring credits in. Uh, the answer is um, yes, based on approval. Um, as long as you know, you're transferring in from an accredited institution, um, make sure that you have every single transcript from every university or college that you've attended. Even if you've attended a, a college for just one class uh, and withdrew, <laughs> we still need those transcripts because um, uh, we have to make sure that, um, again, anything that you've worked towards previously, uh, if it's uh, able to be applied over here at SOPA, that we are able to do that um, as much as possible, as long as we have all of your transcripts uh, readily available to us. 
So you can submit those electronically um, or you can have them mailed. A couple of application deadlines. Um, fall is August 1st. Uh, next spring is January 1st and su next summer is May 15th. Uh, we are still accepting applications right now. So um, again, we encourage you to apply um, to the program of your choice um, sooner rather than later, just so that we know how to accommodate you um, and how you know, to advise you based on the classes that you need uh, once accepted. So credits for prior learning. Um, uh, many of you guys bring in a lot of real world experience. Uh, many of you have been working in your prospective field um, for many, many years, and you may have certain areas of expertise. If you have those areas of expertise um, and you want to receive uh, credit for that, uh, at the undergraduate level, you can earn up to 24 credits and um, you would take an accelerated six week online um, portfolio uh, development course. And then six months from there, you will actually uh, complete um, portfolios based on which classes you would want to get credit for. So for example, if you have been um, in the Homeland Security field for uh, 20 plus years and you feel that you are an expert in the um, undergraduate version of uh, emergency management, the introduction to emergency management class, um, you can take an assessment um, in that area take the portfolio development course, and then work with a faculty member to build a portfolio and earn credit for that course. Uh, we also um, offer that at the graduate level, the maximum is six credits uh, that you can earn for that. Um, we also do at the undergraduate level credit by examination, which is CLEPT or DSST uh, and military training as well. We can accept some of those credits. Um, so be sure to communicate with an advisor, uh, with the program directors about these um, opportunities that you think might work well for you. And then uh, we'll work together to make sure that you receive as much credit as possible. So that you, your end goal is graduation, you get there quicker. Uh, there is financial aid as, uh, assistance available. Um, if you are looking to receive financial aid, be sure to fill out your FAFSA. Um, uh, to receive any type of government aid. And I would encourage you to do that now, even if you have not applied uh, to Tulane yet. Uh, I would encourage you to do it now, even if you're thinking about it, because again, the sooner you do it, the you know, quicker your aid will be processed. Um, we offer 20% discount on tuition uh, if you're at the undergraduate or graduate level. Um, there is a form that you fill out and send in and with along with your government ID and uh, you know once we determine your eligibility for it, it will be sent over to accounts receivable and it will be reflected on your bill. Um, you also are a yellow ribbon uh, school so we do honor those um, you know programs for our students who are eligible. Um, different vocational uh, rehabilitation, uh, GI bills, all those different things. Uh, that you guys receive as your benefit, we do accept as well um, at Tulane. Um, the affordability speaks for itself. Um, many students uh, get a little bit nervous when they see the name Tulane. Uh, however, uh, the School of Professional Advancement, uh, we have to, different tuition rates than the Newcom Tulane College does. So our tuition is way more affordable. Uh, at the undergraduate level, it's about $524 per credit hour. And at the graduate level, it is $1,078 per credit hour. So um, very affordable. Again, you can apply for financial aid uh, through like federal loans or grants, uh, different things like that. Um, again, there are some scholarships that are available at the undergraduate level um, and any at the graduate level. Some of those are outside of the Tulane network, but we do accept many uh, that are approved. Um, as well as if you are a Peak Corps or AmeriCorps member and you have uh, tuition um, waivers for those programs, you can also apply those to um, your bill here at Tulane. All right, and I see that there are a few questions here. Um, 
So the Masters in Homeland Security, when we'll be able to attend classes on campus. Um, so I will let uh, Mark kind of answer that um, in terms of how we're, you know, working through that. But we are uh, scheduled to be on ground in the fall with a few classes also being offered online as well. But um, I'll let Mark speak a little bit more. Sure. Um Amanda's right on. We are planning to be on ground in the fall. Uh, right now, uh, of the courses in the master's program for Homeland Security, uh, we have five courses, different courses that will be offered on ground, uh, but the majority of our program is uh, offered online. Uh, everything that's offered uh, on ground is also offered online as well, uh, but we do have some availability for on-ground courses in the fall. And uh, for the tuition discount, I had an additional, there's an additional question on here. So if you are um, not only active military or if you're a veteran, uh, also if you are a first responder, um, firefighter, um, police officer, um, EMS, they also qualify for the 20% discount as well. Um, hopefully that answers your question, Kelsey. Amanda, it looks like she's a communications officer, uh, yeah. like a dispatcher. Uh, maybe we can clarify that for her, um, and uh, maybe we, we can talk to her individually. Maybe she's commissioned or something like that, so maybe we can right. figure that, yes. help her figure that out. Yeah, so yes, Kelsey, if you would want to um, either send, uh, maybe send an email to, to me, um, and I can get with our um, uh, representative who processes the discount forms, and we can get that answered for you. Um, the GPA that is required to, to the graduate programs is a minimum of uh, 3.0 in undergraduate coursework. Um, you do not need to take a GRE or a GMAT. Um, we do not uh, require any type of examinations to get into our master's programs. Any other questions? Um, we do thank you for joining in. Again, um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and we will be sure to um, answer any questions that come our way. Are the on-ground classes offered during the day and or night? So yes, we have um, a variety of times where our classes are offered. So we do have, uh, the majority of them are in the evenings, late afternoons or early evenings. Uh, because we know that a lot of our students do work, uh, but there are also some daytime options as well. Well, if there's no other questions, again, oh, one more. Is that the same for the online course? So the online course is, um, it's, it's on Canvas, which is our online learning platform. And um, I'll let Mark speak a little bit more, but we, the way they're designed is that everything is done online on Canvas, submitting uh, assignments, even if there's any tests or quizzes, all of those are taken on Canvas. Um, but most of the classes also have um, four uh, online Zoom sessions. Uh, Master. So, is that correct, Mark? Yeah. So they're they're in an asynchronous uh, format. Uh, so you kind of take them at your own pace, uh, but they are module based. Um, so uh, there are some deliverables that you typically have to meet for for each module and each course. Um, but but you can complete them basically at your own pace. And as Amanda referenced, there are some required. Um, uh, Zoom sessions with your instructor, which the instructor sets those dates uh, throughout the semester for uh, for y'all to participate in and, and kind of a live exchange of, of information and questions and, and things like that. And I believe most of those sessions occur between like five and six or six. Right, they're usually in the evenings, most of the time around the same time um, as that, that evening section that's six to eight, maybe f like you said, five to, 5 to 8 p.m. period. Okay. 
Well, thank you everyone for joining and we hope to see your applications soon coming through. Thanks everybody, good to see you.